वेलकम टू अमन जयसवाल यूट्यूब चैनल इन माई लास्ट वीडियो आई टोल्ड यू सम फंक्शन अबाउट द फोटो शूटिंग मेन्यू इन दिस वीडियो आई विल कंटिन्यू विद सम अदर फंक्शन लेट स्टार्ट टूडे विद द आई एस ओ सेंसिटिविटी सेटिंग्स आई एस ओ सेटिंग इज यूज टू फिक्स हाउ सेंसिटिव यू वॉन्ट द सेंसर टू बी so higher the iso number higher the sensitivity of the sensor and vice versa you can set the iso in two ways firstly from the iso button near the on off switch by using the command dial on the right side of your camera next to the record button to adjust the iso press the iso button and rotate the command dial to change the setting You can also do this in the photo shooting menu. In the photo shooting menu, you have two options. If your camera is on the auto mode, you can only modify the ISO settings. However, if your camera is in any other mode apart from the auto mode, for example, the P, S, A or manual mode, you have the option to select some additional settings. Let's see them. Auto ISO sensitivity control. If this is on, it allows the camera to determine the correct ISO setting for the shot you are about to take and make necessary adjustments. So, if you have chosen 200 ISO and the light condition makes it necessary to use, camera will automatically adjust this to 400 ISO. Next is maximum sensitivity. Since we all know a higher ISO can make more noise in your photograph you may like to limit the maximum sensitivity that you want your camera to go to here if you have set the maximum sensitivity to 8000 iso and the conditions require a higher iso than 8000 the camera will only select the maximum limit that you have specified that is 8000 iso however below this iso the camera will adjust it according to the requirement you can also choose a maximum iso with the flash just as we did in the case above this functions in a similar manner the last one is minimum shutter speed you can choose the minimum shutter speed for your iso sensitivity however keeping it on auto is the best option because it is easy to set the shutter speed i however leave the camera on my auto setting so that the camera takes care of all these iso settings now let's look at the white balance menu this is at the top here now you have three different auto white balance setting white balance is adjusted automatically for optimum results with most light sources when an optimal flash is used White balance will be adjusted according to the white balance of the flash. White balance ensures that white objects appear white regardless of the color of the light source. The default setting A1 is recommended with most light sources. Now we have three options here. Auto zero. This keeps the whites and reduces the warm colors so your whites stay white. The second option auto one keeps the overall atmosphere if it was warm it will keep the atmosphere warm and if it's cool it will keep your white cool the third is auto 2 where it keeps the warm light colors it will always be warm no matter even what was seen as cool now we have a lot of other options which you can set depending on the type of light we are using the first is natural sunlight auto it will produce colors as close as possible to what you see with the naked eye temperatures here will range from 4500 kelvin to 8000 kelvin next is direct sunlight this should be used only with subjects that are lit with direct sunlight temperatures about 5200 kelvin the next is cloudy to be used in overcast conditions usual temperatures 6000 kelvin next is shade to be used in subjects with daylight but under shade temperatures about 8000 kelvin the next is an incandescent light so you use this option with an incandescent lighting temperatures usually 3000 kelvin fluorescent for use under different fluorescent lighting conditions flash use with flash and other strobe lights of temperature 5400 kelvin k choose color temperature 
Here we have a choice of choosing the color temperature of our choice. We can have values anywhere from 2500 Kelvin to 10,000 Kelvin. The last is preset manual. Here we can even define the presets that we regularly use and we can easily select them from here. Though there are so many choices, I usually use auto one because it gives me good results with naturally looking photographs and I don't have to worry about making the right choices for white balance. Especially when I'm shooting pictures at an event, it is not easy to make these changes. I would also like to mention that these adjustments with white balances applies only to JPEG images because you can change the white balance in post-production, especially if you shoot in raw file format, the white balance is easily adjusted. Now let's go to the next option in the photo shooting menu. This is picture control. This is used to manage the hues and tones of your photographs. Some standard profiles are built in in the camera and these can be used depending on what kind of results you want. These are useful if you're shooting in JPEG format. However, if you shoot in RAW, we can make changes during post-production. For example, if you're using the standard profile, and in post-production you want to change it to Vivid, it will do is, it will remove the standard profile from the raw file and apply the Vivid profile to it. Uh, if you are shooting a JPEG and you shoot it in the standard profile, the standard profile gets applied and in post-production if you want to put it into Vivid, then it puts this Vivid profile on top of the image so it is a little different but you can still change it. So here are some options that you can automatically select. First is the auto. Here the camera automatically adjusts the hues and tones based on the standard picture control. Here the complexions of the subject will appear softer and trees and skies taken in outdoor shoots appear more vivid as compared to standard picture control. Next is the standard. This gives a standard pro processing for balanced result. This is the recommended default setting in most shoots. Next is neutral. This does minimum processing for natural results. This option is good if you want to do some post-production in the images. Vivid. If you want to emphasize on primary colors, we can use this option. Monochrome is self-explanatory and takes monochrome photographs. Portraits. To get portraits with natural skin texture and rounded feel, this is a very good option. Landscape. Use this for vibrant landscapes and long range photography. Flat. When this option is used, it preserves a lot of information on tones, shadows and highlights. This is especially useful if you want to do some extensive post production work or when you want to retouch the image. Now in addition to this, we have some 20 picture controls. Each has its own combination of hues and tones. These are more critical if you shoot JPEG and you don't want to do any post-production work. In these 20 picture controls, you can manage the setting of the profile and set it to your own preference. Let's take the dream setting. You can come to this profile and go and change all the settings as per your requirement. You can do this for all 20 creative options. Thank you for watching this video. I have now explain quite a few of the photo shooting menu. In the next video, I will continue with some more menus and explain them. If you like my video, please like, share and subscribe. And do not forget to press the bell icon so that when I upload my next video, you can get notified. And please do not forget to comment.